This is a quick walkthrough of Python programming for Skippy for the arbitrary waveform generator. I'm using a M8195. Uh, if you're using the soft front panel, the M8195 has the ability to record things that are going on. So if we go to monitor driver calls, and we just clear that history there. Every time we do something in the GUI itself, that's a bit off screen here. Let me, it's because I'm remoting in. Let me just pull that down so we can see what's going on. Every time I make a call uh, or do something in this window, let's say we turn on a uh, an output or turn it off, we get a command. So we get an output off and we can uh, record that and then use those as calls in the program. So it saves you some time. So that's the cool thing. So that's how I'm getting some of those commands already. I've also leveraged command expert. I've used the uh, M8190. It's quite an old driver, but I was able to uh, add in that driver and get some commands started. So I can go through here and I can turn output on and off and certain features work. That's only a two channel ARB, but it'll, it can get you started with the Skippy commands. And if you recall, once you've got a few things running, you can export the sequence and then choose if you want it with calls to PyVisa. I built out doing it this way copied to the clipboard, dumped it in here, and then made some changes. And what I did is created a command list. So it's actually a list. We contact the resource manager here. We open it up. I've pointed this at, at this other instrument here that's on my network. And I do a basic sanity check here with uh, the IDN. But if you do the command list here, uh, we can run and execute these commands. And so what I did is if you, uh, we go through the, parse through the command list and if it contains a question mark, it means it's a query. So let's do the query and then print whatever comes out of that. Else it's a write and we generate a write command. So that's kind of how it goes. So right now I have things turned off. If I run this code, I'm basically going to enable uh, operation, turn the output puts on that I'm using. Um, I'll do an abort to shut everything off again, make some changes within here. And here's where I'm loading traces uh, of a binary pattern. And then I'm uh, for a couple of them, I'm scaling them. And then I'm just initializing and, and turning it on. Let's do that. Let's kick it off and we'll watch the scope in the upper right corner. And there we go. So we have that. Now I can go in and uh, let's go sign Chan one, I believe was the name. Yeah, sign. Yeah, sign Chan one. If we do that, we will see this load and now that's a sine wave. And if I want to scale at 0.5 for output one, I didn't do any scaling for output four, but output one, I'm going to keep your eyes on the screen in the upper right. There you go. So that's kind of how that goes. How I created these waveforms. Now, depending on the waveform type, you may get nothing coming out uh, that you expected because the pattern length is different. Um, so essentially we're loading more than one pattern into a segment and then we're generating that segment. So the concept of a segment is once you have a segment created, it, it defines all the channels and some may be empty or blank or have bogus data in them, initialized with nothing or garbage. So these segments can be then sequenced. So you have segment names and then sequence numbers. And then there's a, even a further concept called scenes where you would have a group of uh, a sequence in a particular order, maybe a different sequence, and that would be a, a scene. But anyway, we won't go into that level. Um, we're just talking about a single segment. And if you wanted to change just something in a sig single segment, and then see a change here, like we're loading and a real basic thing here. How do we load the pattern or how do we create these bin files? If we have nothing to start with. You will probably have your own waveforms, but just to do this experiment, how the way I did it was I went into standard waveform and I used three waveforms from here so that the pattern length matched exactly that sort of thing. This is beyond the scope. I won't talk about um, setting up the waveform in this video, but this will match the lengths. So what I'm going to do is make a triangle wave. I'm going to make sure the waveform frequency is 100 megahertz. And if I send it to the instrument, we've got a uh, triangle wave here. Now we can save it to file. So I'm going to save it as triangle to file. And you want to let's get this up in front. We've got this running. Let's load what we had before. We've got a square wave on channel one, and then we can say triangle here bin on channel one. So again, trace one, just channel one. And there we go, we have the triangle. 
And that's how it works. So I've created a square and a sign and a multitone. Multitone I made out of, where is it? A multitone waveform here. So I've just did a multitone that way. So that's really you know, the gist of getting some real basic, just standard waveforms going in there. Later on, hopefully I'll have another video talking about how to modify waveforms in here. Thank you.